Hi, and welcome to our visit to Dover Castle, a collection of video and stills from back in 2018. So as you may know, Dover is in the southeast of England, at the closest point to continental Europe. You can get to Dover via high-speed train in just over an hour from London. It's then a half-hour uphill walk to the castle, so you may want to grab a cab. And it sits at the M2, A2 or M20, A20 corridor. There's also plenty of on-site parking available should you choose to drive. But now it's time to go and explore the castle. And probably the most obvious place to start is with the Great Tower. A fortification existed here, probably dating back to the Iron Age. But it was Henry II who paid a huge fortune to have built what we see before us today. And this is the castle's keep, better known as the Great Tower. This building was actually more of a palace for receiving guests and visitors. And you can imagine in medieval times, this must have been a pretty impressive place to visit. What I love about Dover Castle is the way it's laid out, the way it represents a period of time, what it would have been like to live through this period. There's always helpful guides around to answer your questions and provide additional information. And now a confession. I wanted to show you why this castle is known as the key to England. The view from the roof, overlooking Dover Harbour, and in the distance France. But unfortunately, our camera person, Janice, was on strike. However, normal service was resumed when we got to the bottom of the Great Tower. The nice thing about visiting Dover Castle is that there's, there's much more than just the Great Tower. There's the tunnels, for example. Now there's a problem with the Second World War tunnels. There's no video or photography allowed inside, which is a shame because it details the events of Operation Dynamo and the importance of the infrastructure in the Second World War. But you can explore the tunnels that were dug out during the 1216 siege and then later upgraded during the Napoleonic Wars. Stepping outside and heading into daylight, we discover a little bit more of what's on offer at Dover Castle. With views across the countryside, it's easy to see why this was chosen as a place for a stronghold. But a visit to Dover Castle is more than just a visit to a Norman stronghold. Let's step back into Roman and Anglo-Saxon times. Here we have the Anglo-Saxon Church of St Mary in Castro, next to, and this is impressive, the Roman Lighthouse. The church has a bit of a chequered history and has been restored many times over the years, with the last restoration in the Victorian period. Now this is one of two Roman lighthouses built at Dover. The remains of the other can be seen on the Western Heights. It is one of the largest Roman buildings that still stands in England. And again, it has an interesting history. The reason it stands so close to the church is it was converted to become the bell tower for the church. In fact, some of the church may have borrowed a few items from the lighthouse in its construction. that view again over the Straits of Dover to France which is just some 22 miles away or around about 35 kilometers and talking of that journey you can't visit Dover Castle without mentioning Operation Dynamo also known as the Dunkirk evacuation this is a statue to Bertram Ramsey Vice Admiral of Dover who from the tunnels under Dover Castle oversaw the operation to bring back British forces now you can explore the lookout post to see how it would have looked during that time. If you've enjoyed what we put together then why not subscribe so you catch our future travels as well.
So that brings our journey to an end. I hope you've enjoyed what we put together here. Thanks so much for watching.